it was beautiful to see and for all the um, the fans of tactics that are listening to us or all of that is the, the this ability from Germany to attract the Portuguese block on one side and yeah. then just have this long diagonal and switch the ball on the other side where, where Gussens was on his own or the other way around from left to right where Kimmich then was on his own and that's how they completely unsettled and unbalanced the, the Portuguese defense and midfield etc. My issue, Gab, That's and that's direct that, from the Klopp playbook. Yeah, by the completely. Way. Okay. Which a lot of teams do. It's yeah, not yeah. just Germany. It's not rocket science either. But and then that's a perfect link up to 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 Portugal now. Once they do it once or twice, this okay, we attract you on the right hand side and then we switch quickly to the left hand side. Okay, how long does it take you to realize this is what they're going to do all game long with Kimmich and Gusens? Let's make sure that we block it and it doesn't happen again. Yeah, and I think that was. A real issue um, because you know, when Germany were attacking, it was basically three-two-five that they were playing because the front yeah. three were all up there, and then you had those two guys so far forward. In those situations, how are you going to defend that? Because you've got two guys sitting in front of the back four: William Carvalho and Danilo Pereira, both genuine defensive midfielders. Pereira probably quicker than William Carvalho, or certainly looks quicker than William Carvalho. Who, you know as Look, he, he, slightly, it's, slightly, yeah. It's, it's deceptive with Carvalho. Yeah. He's not as slow as he looks, and he's a very, very good player. But, um, but are you going to send Daniel Pereira? Are you going to force him to go to, to, to shift left and right to but go and double up? But he, he can just drop. He's intelligent enough and experienced enough to be to, able to, to drop into the back three yeah, and when send you don't Guerrero, have the ball. Guerrero and, and, and Semedo, exactly. those, those wonderful one on one defenders. No, oh, you said to Bernardo Silva, listen, did you see Griezmann the other night with France? Do the same. Yeah. You have to do the same. You I can't let Gusens on his own. What was Bernardo doing? Yeah, I, don't, I, I think other than the pass, Bernardo did very, very, uh, f for the goal, I think yeah. Bernardo did very little. And stayed for 45 minutes on the pitch anyway. Yeah. Um, Jogo Jot, I think, did put in a shift on the other side. But then again, Kimmich is a pretty good yeah. player on that yeah. side. You haven't mentioned Bruno Fernandes. You haven't criticized Bruno Fernandes in a big game yet. I, I'm Not assuming yet. this is happening now. It's coming. It's coming. Please. I just don't know what he was there for. Because this is my issue, Gab, and I want your opinion on this. I think, I think they're caught in between two ideas right now. Fernando Santos himself, the, the players, the, you've got such an incredible attacking talent in that squad. But you, need, you have to choose between being the Portugal of before, that won you the Euro 2016, very solid, very defensive, very pragmatic, quite minimalist with the ball, which, which they were, and which is what is Santos' DNA, or try to dominate the game and the, and the ball, and then, only then, you can play with those four up front, Jota, Bernardo, Bruno Fernandes, and, and Ronaldo. Otherwise, one of those four is too many. No. You can't I, you can't have you can't play like you used to before, which brought you a lot of success with those four up front. Impossible. This is never gonna work. Not just against Germany, but in general, this is not gonna work. And certainly not on Wednesday against France. You have to choose between either one and then you make sure that you get the ball, keep it, create something, play in the opposition's half. But if you want to play as deep as you did on, on Saturday against Germany, drop one of those four. It will not work. I completely agree. I thought we had a situation where off the ball, Bernardo Silva gave you nothing defensively. Yeah. Cristiano, you know, you don't want Cristiano. No, no, other than set sure. pieces, you don't want Cristiano to track back, and that's fine. I, I got no, but but also it means that in open play, you know, he's not there to do the defensive work. Bruno Fernandez, it felt to me like he was picking up one of the three center backs. I'm like, dude, you don't need Why to do that. Exactly. What, you, you think Matthias Ginter is going to go on like a 60 yard run? Other than set pieces, <laughs> you don't need to worry about him. No, so effectively, that that took three of your front four out of the game. Yeah. And it's really difficult to defend effectively with six plus Jota, especially when two of those six are Semedo and Guerrero, who aren't those types of players. You're right. Um, I think there's another issue, another rink, which I've touched upon before, but I think we saw it again in this game, is you need Cristiano. If you have Cristiano, you, especially if you're going to play this way, you need to have a striker, somebody running behind. Yeah. You can ask Jota to do that, because Bernardo Silva is not going to do that. Bruno Fernandes can't do that. You can ask Jota to do that, but because he has the energy, even though he's not really center forward. But who Jota can't do everything. He can't run behind and double and, up at the yeah, back yeah, on yeah, Kimmich and right. provide crosses for Cristiano. Yeah. You know, so I, I really felt for him in this game. Yeah, um, we will necessarily see a different Portugal against against France. They have to now anyway, because they could be, you know, they could be knocked out.
But the question is, what is the best? Because on paper, my thing is, oh, giving it Stechamp, we'll, we'll see the, the big blue bus in front of Hugo Lloris. Ah, oh, here right? we go. No, I don't, I don't mean to be unkind. So necessarily, you're going to have to try to keep the ball. I mean, would you drop one of the two defensive midfielders? You have to. You must, right? You have there's to. There's no point I mean, against France. There's no point at all. And then, and then you can have Renato Sanchez, for example, and then play if you want that, for, that front four. But then, again, that front four and having, having them like this will not make you as solid as you used to. So you would have to be ready for France to counter attacks, for France to have quick transition forwards yeah. when they have the ball. I just don't know if this Portugal team is ready. And this is what we said when we previewed the tournament. I don't know if you can just switch, just switch it on like this with the ball suddenly when you haven't really been working on it in the past before and that's why I'm, I'm really curious to see but they will have to do something different and by the way just to finish on your point if you're Andre Silva and you came on in the 83rd minute against Germany when you've been like 4-1 down and then 4-2-1 for ages how must you feel and again if he didn't want to win the game he was right to put Andre Silva on for just the last 10 minutes why not before that is a curious one to me I think he's too differential to certain players uh, and maybe that's why, obviously I'm not talking about Cristiano because that's inevitable, but some of the others. But mm. yeah, I, th I, thought that was, I thought that was certainly disappointing. Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. And for more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for premium content and live streaming, subscribe to ESPN+.